everyone. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for tuning in. So my name is um, Chef Joanne. I am the executive chef for Unilever Food Solutions Middle East, um, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. And um, today we, we will be joined by, um, sorry, let me just start my video. So we will be joined by our well-being coach and a rapid transformation therapist. She's a, she is our expert for today, Ms. Um, Samira Alexander. Um, she will be talking to us what um, RTT or rapid transformation therapy is all about. And um, basically today our topic is well-being, well-being of people working in the food service industry. We all know that um, the food service industry is the one of the Groups, groups of people that has been greatly affected by the lockdown, um, people um, not getting paid, losing their jobs, or feeling very anxious, you know, they don't know what to expect in the next few months. So it's very understandable, there's a lot of unrest nowadays. So that's why we invited um, Samira to talk, talk to us about, you know, simple coping strategies, you know, how to recognize these feel, feelings. So without further ado, um, I would just like to introduce you, Ms. Um, Samira. Hello, everyone. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes. Um, okay, so uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I am a RT coach and therapist, and I work with people who are going through anxiety or um, feeling stuck or, or getting sick. So, and what is rapid transformational therapy? Well, it's a cutting edge technique, really taps in at the subconscious level to uh, in an individual's mindset to um, clear any limiting beliefs or blocks so they can actually reach their optimum level. Yeah, so um, that's what I do. Um, did you also ask about um, well-being and wellness, the definition? Yes, of that? let's define well. Yes. Yeah, let's do let's do define, you know, what well-being is because um, um, this is something that we rarely talk about in the industry, you know, about um, anxiety, feelings, well-being. So I guess we can start the conversation by defining what exactly is well-being. So well-being is one's level of wellness. So like when we go to the gym and we're doing like 10 push-ups and we want to know how how fit we are doing those 10 push-ups. We mm. want to also find out how well we are, how we're feeling. And that's what well-being is about. And so it really looks at it from the emotional level, the mental level, and then at the physical level, how healthy, how healthy we are. Um, and so an individual who is um, who is happy, he's feeling positive, has feeling, is feeling calm, feeling relaxed. Um, it, one would say that they have a high level of wellness and well-being. Um, if an individual is going through anxiety, fear, um, uh, feeling ang angry and or you know moving into a state of depression um, then one would say that their level of well-being and uh, wellness is is quite low and they need to work on that to increase that improve that so it's a gauge of where you are in terms of um, of both emotionally mentally and physically mm -hmm. so when we talk about the food industry it's a very um, it has a very macho persona um, uh -huh. talking about Know, anxiety, fear, and despair is not like a, a normal topic. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, whenever, whenever chefs feel stressed, they feel it's normal because you know they're they're in such working conditions, they're always like in, in cramped kitchens, they're always working under pressure. And so sometimes, you know, feelings of anxiety and stress, you know, sometimes we confuse one with the other, but but we know that we're feeling something. So um, how do we recognize that, you know, we're feeling anxious, um, especially okay. now, it's really, really very important to talk about it. So, I mean, generally, to some level, stress can be good for you. Um, it gives, it makes us alive, you know, so it, it can be good. But given in modern day society now, these days, and especially with what's going on, um, we can over, get overloaded with stress and we're constantly in fight or flight mode. And that mm -hmm. when we're in that fight or flight mode and that level of stress, that manifests in different ways. And especially when we're internalizing a lot of stress, um, then it manifests in a lot of ways. And so we can feel anxious, we could be, become breathless, we feel um, our hearts palpitating, um, we then move towards comfort eating, um, maybe smoking or smoking a lot, um, doing things in excess as coping strategies, um, 
um, not being able to hold your emotions easily, um, feeling, um, getting angry very quickly, snapping at people, shouting, um, because you can't, you, you're, you're not majorly able to control that. So all of that is indication that you're feeling, well, you're not able to cook your stress levels, that you're overloaded and it's creating manifesting into other areas, including anxiety um, and not able to remain still. And that can ultimately obviously have impact, negative impacts on relationships, personal relationships, relationship with people, and also ultimately lead into the form of depression as well, or depression. Yeah, uh, we've been hearing a lot of stories that, um, well, maybe not in this region as much, but at least in America, they've been talking about uh, mental health. Uh, we've, mm -hmm. we've heard a lot of people, I mean, prominent names, you know, um, having a nervous breakdown, and, um, you know, unfortunately some have, you know, have um, committed suicide. So those are like, um, like sensitive things that people are starting to talk about, right? And um, it's something that needs to be addressed. And, um, and um, like during our past conversations, we talked about how do we cope? Like, what are the simple strategies that chefs and cooks, you know, can, um, can use? Mm -hmm. um, with with anxiety well first of all i know you've mentioned earlier that that they need to recognize it and um yes very clearly earlier you know what are the manifestations when they're feeling anxious or very highly stressed in a very very negative way but what about um coping what are the simple strategies that they can you know they can yeah they can exactly i mean you touched upon quite a few important points there anyway in terms of people and i'm glad that people are talking about this in the food and beverage industry uh, and, uh, and in terms of chefs and things because it's a very stressful environment but generally overall the world is in a, in a stressful environment and you know whether it's corporate and things like that and we do need to have coping strategies to manage our stress levels uh, and the, some of the people that you may have mentioned um, that high profile people who've you know <clears throat> had broke breakdowns and probably um, you know um, kill themselves you know taking their own life it's because that you know they didn't have a good coping mechanism and so it's really important and I'm glad that people are talking about this more because mental health is key overall generally amongst men and women um, and men particularly at the moment because obviously um, it's never seen to be um, uh, a thing that you really need to talk about because men have to be strong and uh, and all that kind of stuff. So, you mm -hmm. know, this is really key at the moment anyway. And there are a number of coping strategies that you can do. Firstly, is to have the mindset of a resilient mindset. So particularly right now with what's going on, we need to have a resilient mindset. You know, there are things that we can control and there's things we can't control. And obviously what's going on globally, we can't control, but there are things we can control. And so we need to have a mindset where we're resilient, we're strong, we're empowered, that we can cope with mm -hmm. anything. Second thing we I would say to you is exercise is key because we want to shift the body. And obviously nutrition is key because obviously we want to have put in things that are healthy for us. Um, a third thing I would say is breathing techniques are good coping mechanisms, meditation to still the mind. And fourthly, um, it's more about having good relationships, reaching out to friends and family, talking and communicating, having those bonds and those relationships, speaking to loved ones or friends who are kind to you so that you can basically um, you know, have those connections and, and be part um, and feel um, connected. Let's just, you know, take this through, through one by one so that, uh, you know, our viewers will be um, clear on, on, on what they need to do. So first you talked about resilient, uh, yes. resilience. Um, um, chefs do feel that they are very um, resilient because, you know, they, they've gone through quite a lot, you know, when they work in the kitchen. There's a, the environment is um, totally different from the corporate yeah. world. Um, but, now they're, but now there's a huge shift from working from that environment and now they're in lockdown, you know, they're alone. Some of them are living by themselves alone or in accommodations mm -hmm. and, and they, they don't have anything to do. So there's a lot of negativity happening in their minds, right? So mm -hmm. when we talk about how do we cope with all these, you know, mm -hmm. negativity comes into our mind yeah I mean look at the moment everyone's t talking about what's going on and it's just can't, there's a lot of uncertainty right there's a lot of uncertainty nobody really knows day by day and we're following that so and then constantly you're look, watching the news you're seeing that you're talking with people about that and um, you know you're constantly creating that as well so it's really hard you know it's very difficult to try and stay calm but it's really important that you have to because um, 
you know, you, you have to have that resilient mindset. You have to remain mentally strong. You have to say, look, okay, whatever I'm faced with, I'm faced with. There is uncertainty. We don't know what's happening next. Or, you know, I don't know what when I'm going to go back to work or if there's, you know, a job back when I go back or whatever there is, whatever you've, you're facing with right now. Some people have had pay cuts. Some people have, you know, had are on unpaid leave. Some people have lost their jobs. Other people have lost their their restaurant business you know there's there's a whole range of spectrum of people who are going through all sorts of things some people have lost their loved ones because of what's happened with COVID-19 right. you know so there's a mm-hmm. whole spectrum of people going through different things but no matter what you're facing um, it's really important right now to remain resilient to be empowered within yourself and it's saying to yourself no matter what I'm facing really face the reality of what you have and be and you're able to control that so you know whatever you're facing say okay whatever it is I'm going to be resilient I'm going to be strong and be able to overcome this no matter what whatever it is because that's something that you can control so there's your belief a belief system of, you need to, mm-hmm. there's a belief and system you need to have a, yeah and you mentioned the, earlier about positive affirmation right exactly and, so positive exactly so really it's about you know having that resilient mindset taking small steps confronting what you so having a resilient mindset saying conf- confronting what you have. So belief system first of believing that, you know, you are going to be able to overcome this no matter what, confronting what that is, whatever issue that you're confronting right now, and then taking some more steps towards that so you can be proactive. Um, and, and really saying that, you know, as I said, you know, firstly, positive mindset, uh, a positive affirmation. So I am strong. I'm resilient. Resilient. I'm empowered. I can. Conf- I have amazing coping mechanism. I have an amazing coping mechanism, and I can re- remain strong and d- confront this and move forward through this. That's one thing, and that just shifts your whole energy by just even saying that. If you keep saying that to yourself, you'll feel that you feel more empowered. Your body gets stronger. You, your mind is taking on this belief system and saying, okay, you want us to be strong. You want us to be empowered. Fine, we'll do that for you. And then you can, from that point, you can confront what you're doing. The other thing is, there's a technique that I want to tell you about where a lot, because of your feeling stressed mm-hmm. right now, a lot of the blood flows to the back of the brain and you can't think straight. So one of the techniques, if I move myself to the side, one of the techniques you can do is put your hand, your foot hand here, on your forehead and put the other hand at the back of your forehead and think of the problem that you've got and ask yourself the question, you know, how can I overcome this? How can I deal with this right now? What is it that I'm having to face right now? How can I look at this differently? Mm-hmm. And, you know, how can I be in control? And the thing is that the blood moves to the front of the brain and it begins starts giving you creative ideas how you can think of this or reframe what you're going through differently. It empowers you. You feel stronger to be able to deal with something that and learn to control what you can control and let go of what you can't because, you know, we can't control what happened globally, you know, 3 billion people in lockdown, you know, um, we can't control that. But what we can control is how we take care of ourselves during the situation. So we can do those things. That's true. So we talk about, you know, um, you know, um, shutting out um, negative thoughts and negative, um, um, you know, just negativity, um, to put it simply, or self-pity. But uh, you also mentioned like your second strategy is also to take care of ourselves physically, the eating part. Mm -hmm. And this time, I'm sure a lot of people are are binging and um, eating comfort food, (laughs) unhealthy items. So so what's that food on the moods of people? Okay, look, it's easily done, right? Because we want to feel comforted. You know, we want to just go into our shells and be like a baby. We have, want to have carbohydrates. It's natural to want to have carbohydrates or want to feel comforted. And so having chips, burgers, uh, pastas, all the high carbohydrates, foods, pizzas, uh, comforting. We feel good about that. We feel good crisps. And, and, you know, it's natural to want to go towards that. It's natural to do that. However, we're in an environment where basically we need to make sure that our health is key here. We want to boost our immune system, A, both mentally, because, you know, what I th- we think is going to affect our, mu- our immune system anyway. And B, you know, given that what's going on in terms of the virus, we want to make sure that we're boosted our immune system as best as possible so that we don't get sick. So one of the things a strategy you can do is at least have one juice a day or one smoothie incorporate into everything else that you're doing because those are live enzymes that you're having into your body you're putting in some goodness into your body and those little enzymes are alive and that gives you a good boost of energy it gives you good happy feeling and you know even if you want to be you can't get depressed when you're having a smoothie uh, full of goodness smoothie, or a yeah. juice yeah or a juice right they're, they're full of green you know more color sunlight. more color in your food mm-hmm. more colors in your food but also a lot all of that colors in our food <laughs> 
happy colors in our food, but also all that, all that sunlight that, you know, from those, those green vegetables, for instance, try and have more green smoothies and juices than you have like fruit, uh, fruit based ones. But if you can't do that, just even have some fruits, have some vegetables. But if you can do smoothies, one smoothie, just one smoothie a day or a juice, it can, it can, it can make a huge difference on your well being anyway. Um, it's extremely mm -hmm. powerful. And there's studies out there to, to show you that you can uh, do that. So even if you want to do some comfort eating, go ahead and do it, but at least have one smoothie or one juice. And you spoke about exercise as well. I think that's what, yeah. one of the hardest things to do. Like, you know, me personally, like I, I struggle with getting myself out of the rut, out of a rut, like to get myself to exercise again. And especially now when it's so tempting to just be a couch potato and watch Netflix the whole day, how do you get yourself to get up and exercise? You know, it's interesting because obviously, you know, yeah, it's hard, right? Because obviously we can't, obviously we're on lockdown and for, for a good reason. Um, but the thing is we want to exercise, but you know, there's no excuse. Even if you're in a small, tiny room, I just saw a video from our group that I've just been in that people, you can exercise. There's a woman who's basically doing her 6K walk that she has to do every day because she's on a specific diet plan and she exercise regime. She's actually doing it on the spot, walking for 6K on the spot for, I don't know, 30 minutes or 40 minutes in, that, in, in her room, okay? Mm -hmm. Now that's one extreme, but you know, you know, it's easy. You wanna watch just Netflix and sit on the couch, fine. But just listen to, play a song, play one of your favorite songs. It's only three minutes and it'll give you some, it'll get the body moving. If, especially if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling stressed out, you're feeling um, your heart's palpitating, whatever you're going through right now, just play a song, one of your favorite songs and play it and just play it for three minutes and see if your body can start moving because we hold so much of this stress and anxiety in our bodies anyway. And sometimes we need to move around. Sometimes just sitting on the couch and watching Netflix becomes a point when sometimes the body says, you know, enough's enough. I can't do it anymore. I have to move around. Mm -hmm. Even I was doing that today, right? I need to do that. So we need to do that. So just play a song, just play one little song for three minutes and move your body a little bit. And then we play that song again. And then do it. And before you know it, it's 10 minutes gone. 15 minutes gone, 20 minutes gone. If you've done 20 minutes in your room, just on the spot, a little bit of a dance with your favorite song, it's not going to harm you. And it's going to yeah. be a little bit of exercise and moving you. And it releases all of this um, anxiety and the stress um, that you've been holding in your body, probably holding in your chest or your stomach or in your head. Um, and so you're releasing all of that. And it's giving you, putting a smile on your face. And the more you do that, the more the body right. wants to crave that and do that. So there's no excuse, really. You can do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the fourth one you were mentioning to us, is something that's really easy to do, but you were telling me earlier that a lot of people don't know how to breathe properly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Super simple, but you know, it, it, it's a, it's something if done properly can relieve a lot of negative feelings. Yes, absolutely. So look, I work with a lot of clients and, and everyone who comes to see me, they don't know how to breathe, <laughs> you know, everyone, um, most people are breathing through their chest, okay, and just that is going to create anxiety or, you know, because we end up hyperventilating, and especially when we're stressed, we end up doing it more, and we end up hyperventilating and getting anxious, and, and the, the key to doing that is breathing correctly, and the way to breathe correctly is to really breathe through your belly, and to breathe in and out, it's like creating a pregnant belly, filling it the, the, the belly with air and breathing in slowly, holding and then releasing. So that's a good way to start doing that and just really um, calming yourself down. So, I mean, if you want to demonstrate, I can demonstrate on yourself and if anyone's, you know, whoever's watching, they can yeah. do this. So we can do this, so take a deep breath mm -hmm. in, feel the, okay, so one, two, three, four. So breathe in and feel the air fill into the bottom and into your belly. So you get a pregnant belly and hold it for a few, you know, for a few seconds and then just release and breathe in again hold and then release and the way to do this is breathe in for five hold for five and release for five so let's just do that for a few minutes because i'm sure that could help some people out there who are watching this so chef cho if you can breathe in so at the count of five so breathe in one two two three four five hold one, two, three, four, five, and release. One, two, three, four, five. One more time. One, two, three, four, five. Hold. One, two, three, 
four, five, and then release. One, two, three, four, five. One more time. Breathe in. One. I think two. I'm still doing it incorrectly. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so breathe in. One, two, three, four, five. Hold. One, two, three, four, five. And release. One, two, three, four, five. Where do you think you were doing it incorrectly? I'm holding it too short, I think. Okay. So yeah, I mean, and the thing is, go ahead. No, no, sorry. You were telling us earlier also as simple as rubbing the collarbone. Yes, exactly. So one of the things that we, yeah. So basically we're, we're as we're holding on to a lot of um, energy and, you know, or stress, this is a way of just energizing yourself. It's like in your collarbone, you know, where just before the, the collarbone, there's two points here on your chest. And then you can just massage those points, right? And then you take your two mm -hmm. fingers here and these two points here, the top of the lip and the bottom of the lip, you rub, right? While you're, while you're massaging these points here, and they probably can be tender, and you rub mm -hmm. these points here, okay? Mm -hmm. And do that for a few minutes. And you do that on the both sides like this, right? And then do that, right? Do that and practice mm -hmm. that. My lipstick's all over my face now. Um, <laughs> and, so, so you can do that. And also have your fist and at the bottom of your, um, of your back um, where the mm -hmm. elbow is, you just massage that part there as well. And just doing these techniques here, massaging this and doing this and at the back will energize, it give you a sudden boost of energy. And it just releases right. all the, any anxiety and things and gives you the boost of energy. So you can just feel much more calmer. You feel a bit more energized. You know, your brain is more, much more clearer. Um, and that helps you. You know, that's a little technique that you can do as well. So again, it's massaging at these two points here, just below the collarbone, taking right. two fingers here, doing it this side like mm -hmm. this, and then doing mm -hmm. it the other side like this, and then taking oh, the fist okay. and massaging hands. at the bottom, both hands. Yeah, exactly. So I think my lipstick's all over my face, but it's okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, so that's another technique. So the other technique that you were talking about, it's, I think for a lot of chefs and, and, and cooks, it sounds sounds a bit fluffy because you know we don't really you don't hear chefs okay i'm gonna go to my corner and meditate for a while so but <laughs> but it's super it's really really important and um i've been seeing a lot of apps a lot of advertising a, a lot of advertisements in regards to you know taking you know five just five minutes just to meditate and just reset your mind and it's really really has a huge effect on you know on how to manage your your stress so how do you advise, um, how do, yeah, what's your advice for chefs and, and cooks and, you know, people in the F&B industry just to, you know, take five and just reset? Why is it yeah. so important? So meditation is very important. And I'll tell you why, because we have, I don't know if you know, but we have, we have about 80,000 thoughts going through our mind every single day. And mm -hmm. about 40,000 of them are on repeat. So if you have a thought of belief, that is not positive. It's like negative. You think I'm not enough or I'm rubbish at my job or I'm, you know, I'm a failure or I'm never going to succeed. If you have these thoughts that this is a subconscious level, you're re rewiring these thoughts again and again, and again, or I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling anxious. I'm fearful. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't, and they're going on again and again in your mind. And the thing is the mind doesn't know the difference between a good thought or a bad thought, right? It just, right. just creates thoughts. The thing is that what we happens to us is that we have these thoughts and we are, the whole body starts to react to these thoughts, which is disempowering because we become weak. If we're having negative thoughts going through our mind again and again and again, if we're feeling stressed, if you're in a, in, a, in a kitchen all day long and you're feeling stressed or somebody shouted at you or something's happened, you know, you're, you're constantly thinking negatively, right? So, and it's disempowering on the body and affects the body. And so um, meditation is a way of actually breaking that thought pattern and actually learning to become the master of your mind because we are the master of mind. We don't have to react to any thought that comes through our mind at all. We are the master because the mind is going to think of whatever it wants to think. So we need to mm -hmm. learn to do that. And the, the, learn, the way to learn to become the master of our minds is through meditation. And, you know, there's, you have Headspace. There's quite a few apps, as you mentioned, are available. Um, and, you know, there are, um, but you can even just do it simply. You don't need an app. It's learning to meditate and take, be still and learning to control the thoughts that are coming in your mind. And there's a very simple yeah. way to do that is basically just closing your eyes, taking a few deep breaths, after you've done your breathing technique there, mm -hmm. you're closing your eyes and just close and just think of a white space. Think of a white space and allow the thoughts to come in. 
but don't attach yourself to them. So if there's a thought about, oh, you know, I have to go and pick up the washing. Okay, thank you for that thought. Goodbye. Um, and not relate to say goodbye to that thought. Oh, you know, feeling um, your a belief that comes in, oh, I, I'm a failure or something, you know, and think, thank you for that, that good, goodbye. You not, not attach yourself to these thoughts. You'll be having right. in the beginning, you have your mind is racing like crazy. But the more you do this and you remain still and keep focusing and going back to that white space, the more you're able to calm down, the more the thoughts are going to slow down, the more you mm -hmm. can actually think clearly uh, with whatever you're having to deal with. Um, and you'll feel much more, have more inner peace within yourself. So meditation now is not woohoo. It's, it's a high performance technique and tool now, like breathing is. I mean, you know, all the top people, the billionaires, the millionaires, the top people in all industries are, are using meditation on a day-to-day -day basis. There are some people who are not, who don't make investment decisions or business decisions unless they've actually done meditation beforehand. And so, yeah. you know, it's very important. And so the more you do that on a day-to-day -day basis, I mean, doing 10 minutes, start off with five minutes and build it up to 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the evening. The more you do that, the more you're going to remain calm, you'll remain still, and then you'll be able to manage right. your thoughts and able to remain calm and relaxed. Mm -hmm. I can think demonstrate that. The, yeah. Also, um, so hi, viewers. <laughs> the, um, if we have time later, Ms. Samira will demonstrate that. So um, she's gonna show us how easy it is, but I guess the challenge lies in our heads, you know, how to filter negative thoughts out of our out of our minds. I think that's the most um, challenging part. Yeah. So that's what you were telling us is about, um, I think this is pretty much um, what everybody has been saying is um, focus on what matters. And, and, yes. list, and you were sharing with us earlier, you have to list down you know what you're thankful for yes power of gratitude and power these of are some gratitude, of the links right. yeah the power of gratitude so the thing is there's a list of links i've actually um 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 have as well and i think they'll put them in the chat box or email them to everyone so you know you can learn to breathe a breathing technique uh, a meditation technique um and the power of gratitude now yes i mean we're going through a global phenomenon unprecedented right no one could have predicted this you know my previous job you know, I used to be, I used to forecast recessions or forecast uh, slowdowns and things like that. We could never pr pr uh, predicted this. It could never, we could have never done that. So we are where we are. So the thing is that um, it, it's about, um, sorry, what was your question again? I've completely forgotten. <laughs> The power of gratitude. Yeah, gratitude. Yes, exactly. Planning, gratitude. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, it's like no matter what you're facing and confronting right now, it could be some one of the worst things that you're confronted, you're faced with right now. And it's mm -hmm. really scary. You're really scared. You don't know what's going to happen next. Sure. But the thing is that we still need to come from a place of gratitude. What can you be grateful for? Because, yes, you know, we may have had to, you know, from a financial, we've been affected financially. But what about you know, the fact that we do have our families with us, or we have families safe in another country, or the fact that we're lucky that we have a partner that we can talk to, or, you know, our children, or, you know, connections that we have as friends as well. These are things that, you know, that you could be grateful for, or it could be other things that you'd be grateful for. Just write down the list of things that you're grateful for, five things in the morning, five things in the evening, that shifts your energy as well. And you come from a space of um, gratitude of, of a peace and balance and that is extremely powerful and from that place you can then think about well what can I do in my situation right now how can I move forward and you can start thinking again start create, thinking creatively but you know really think about what you're what what you're grateful for right now because everyone ha has uh, can be grateful for something in their life right now um, and it's really good mm -hmm. to be able to do that and it shifts your energy yeah, yeah. it shifts your energy and it's and it's, and it's really funny, like, you know, to put it in a, in a layman's perspective, we often laugh at, we often laugh at, you know, movie plots, where in the sh they show the, the, the main star of the movie, like, he would be successful in the mid beginning, and he would face a challenge, and he would be depressed, and he would often pick himself up with by exercising, breathing, or yes, have a yes. makeover, and then he would, you know, have some positive reaffirmation going on, and then he, and he's going to be successful again. It exactly. Looks on screen, but you know, it's pretty much true. It's true. Um, and it's, it, and exactly. Uh, Chef Joe is absolutely true. And there's hundreds and hundreds of examples. I've actually given some links of people who've overcome adversity and how they've changed their life and done phenomenally well. So the thing is like, and serial entrepreneurs, there are people who've made millions and they've lost millions or billions, right? And they've bounced mm -hmm. back. Even if we look at the 2008, um, 
what happened in 2008 and there was a recession and global downturn, people bounce back from that as well. Uh, you know, there are people who, who, if they want to, and it's all down to mindset. It's about having that resilient mindset, thinking no matter what's going to happen, I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to get through this and overcome this and become successful again, right? Because right now, right. you know, if you compare other recessions, you know, or other downturns or things that have happened, this is no one's fault. Sometimes you would have had, you know, things that have happened in 2008 or you know other times where it was due to the banking system or due to interest rates or whatever it was the u.s markets whatever you can come up with 100 reasons but this was just coming out right. of the blue right so there's no uh -huh. it's no one's fault no one can be blamed for it it's just you know one would say this is a global reset right the universe is saying that we need to reset the, the globe right so this is a time that yes yeah, we we, we, yeah, and, and so this is a time where no matter where you're going, what you're going through, you can have a, if you have a resilient mindset and you have the power of belief, you believe that you're not going to get through anything, you're going to believe that the mind's going to say, okay, you, you believe that, then we're not going to do anything. If you believe that you can overcome, uh, overcome anything, any adversity, your mind's saying, okay, we're going to overcome this adversity. You can give the instructions to your mind because your mind mm -hmm. is extremely powerful. It's this massive supercomputer, more powerful than any computer. And, you know, we need to give it the right instructions, the right messages. And the more we give it the right positive messages, the more you're going to be able to overcome whatever you need to overcome and get through that and get onto the other side. Right. But yes, absolutely. There's lots of people and examples um, of that, people who've overcome adversity. And I have put some links to yes. people who've done that. Okay, Samira, let's just um, um, open the box for, for a few questions. So I have a question here. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it said that cooks and chefs are literally on plug and play, right? So whenever, like, it's not like in the corporate world where in they, they go in, you know, somebody would hold their hand, do a proper induction period. It's, it's not like that. They're like, literally, when you go in, you, you have to know what you need to do. And the pressure is, is always really high. It's unsurmountable. But now, like it's a period of reset, and and you know you have to like what you said. It's a, it's not only a global reset, and you you also have to do this for yourself, reset yourself. So how do you advise people to start their own process of self check on their well being? How do they start first? Okay, so look, this is a, you know being at home, being at, you know this is a good perfect opportunity to have this time on your hands from being working 12, 14 hour days to really being at home and not being able to do anything. So really it's about inner reflection, right? It's about inner reflection. It's about um, thinking about where you are right now. And it's about looking at your well-being. And so how you would do that is just saying, well, where am I right now in terms of my wellness, my well-being? How do I feel? What, am I feeling anxious? Am I overeating? Am I just zoned out and just watching Netflix all day long and I can't confront, you know, um, you know, the bills that I have to pay or, you know, whatever it is, you know, so it's about how you're feeling. So just take that time to say, what are you feeling? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling, are you hyperventilating? Are you having migraines? Are you having stomach pains and things? These are shows of mm -hmm. kind of a stress related, you know, stress is, is indication of stress, right? And anxiety. Yeah. So, and it's just thinking, okay, so I have that. So, and rate yourself from one to 10. 10 being that, you know, my wellness is, 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 is good. And one being my wellness is not good. I have all these issues going on. So then, you know, all the coping mechanisms that we just highlighted right now, start with one, you know, if it's feeling mm -hmm. that you're, you know, just even the breathing technique, you know, or even a belief saying, you know, I'm resilient, I'm going to make, I'm going to get through this. And then say some positive affirmations. You can sit that, say them while you're sitting or lying on a sofa, right? While you're even watching a Netflix yeah. movie, you could be saying those positive affirmations. The more you say, you, the more you become energized, the more you may want to jump off the sofa and do something and, and do something proactive. So you can pick one yeah. of those things or start doing one, at least one of those things and start building on that. Um, and, and, and feeling good about yourself and then seeing where that goes right now. So really just pick one thing. Firstly, engage where you are right now, rate yourself out of 10, and then pick one of those coping strategies and start implementing those. Right. So we have a question here from one of our viewers. So he's asking where our industry will stand all over the world after, the COVID, after COVID is over. That is the concern of all chefs. How should we go with that? So maybe he's asking like the anticipation of, um, you know, when, uh, when COVID is over, you know, what do they need? Probably the question would be, how do they pre prepare themselves 
post-COVID because there's a lot of uncertainties. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that we don't know what's going to happen post-COVID, right? And there's obviously people talking about, you know, a, a recession, slowdowns and stuff. I think that we're slightly more protected in, in this country anyway. And uh, we have, um, and, uh, and you know, there, there people, I think, will go back to, the restaurants will be open again. People will want to go and eat again. I think there's people who are under lockdown who are desperate to go out anyway. So, you know, things will mm -hmm. start moving again. But in order to manage yourself, no matter what, you know, we don't have a crystal ball, right? So we don't know. So we can't control what's going to happen in the future. But what we can do is manage ourselves and take care of ourselves and our well-being right. and say, no matter what comes in, it comes our way. If I manage these, if I do these coping strategies, I'm going to remain strong and resilient and cope with anything that comes my way. And do if it's good and positive, yeah. great. And if it's is it negative, you're going to remain resilient and stuff, strong enough, empowered in your life to keep pushing through that. Yeah, that's true. So we have to, you know, take care of ourselves first before this thing is over so that we're better prepared, you know, prepared for what might come. So we have a yes. second question here. Um, it says, um, so he's asking, how do we be, how, how to be intentional about um, consuming or maybe how to be in intentional um, with our consumption during this um where I don't quite understand the question, but how to be intentional about consuming oh, coronavirus news to maintain mental well-being? So okay, maybe the so, effects of all yes, the news. Yes. Yeah. So you know what? You know what? Stop watching the news. Because the thing is, we know coronavirus has happened. We know that we're on lockdown, mm -hmm. right? We all know that. Nothing's going to change. You know, we may want to know that basically um the date of when this may over finish but take each day as it comes and you know the thing is the more you watch this news the more it creates anxiety the more stress try and watch you know limit the number of news that you're watching don't put it on all day long don't put the news on all day long maybe watch it for 10 minutes in the morning and maybe you want to watch it 10 minutes in the evening just to get some updates but or not even watch it at all because you're going to get the you're going to get the the flyer or or or, or the uh, the um the fly to tell us when lockdown is over or you know when we can go out right so we need to mm -hmm. remain healthy and positive so you know we need to focus we need to feed our mind with healthy positive things right now and as i said we're feeding right. our mind with you know positive affirmations and we're meditating breathing but consuming healthy things so maybe if you don't have have not much to do and you're this is an opportunity for, for you to learn a skill maybe you want to you know be creative maybe you can you want to practice some new cooking skills or cooking things that you want to, that you haven't tried to do, or you want to learn a skill that you've never had a chance to do, um, or do some of these things, you know, get into your spirituality. Ramadan is happening starting on Thursday. And so there's going to be a lot of fasting going on and spirituality. So it's a perfect time to be actually focusing on your spiritual practices if you haven't. And if you haven't done mm -hmm. any spiritual practices, maybe it's a time to do that because the power of prayer as well, um, mm -hmm. it, it, extremely powerful right and it keeps you centered it keeps you focused it keeps you calm and so the bigger picture so there's things that you can do um and and so i i would highly suggest not to consume too much of the news maybe maybe five minutes in the morning and maybe five minutes in the evening if not i would uh, and yeah you know i'd, I'd you, say you should have a cut off it. time right exactly you should exactly, have a because, cut off time exactly because the thing is we know what the story is now right is everything's unfolded we'll know when we're meant to um, right. things that are meant to open up. So let's get in control what we can control. Okay. So admittedly, this crisis has made everyone vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and, and um, it's really changed um, the mindset of people. Um, some may become stronger and some may, you know, discover their sides of weaknesses. So for sure, post-COVID or while this is happening, mm -hmm. um, we have to normalize this kinds of conversation, right? Like we have to make it um, okay to talk about feelings. So how do you advise the industry, the food industry where, where this kind of conversation is not normal? Because if you do, if you do start this conversation, it may be seen as a sign of weakness. So how mm. do you, what, you know, how do we normalize this conversation? Okay. So 
out of any time, any other time in the, on the planet, this is the time to normalize these kind of conversations, okay? This is a massive message right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, mental health, especially, you know, because I, the F&B industry is mainly male dominated. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not trying to be sexist yes. here. It's mostly yeah. men, right? And it men is, have grown, it is. Yes. And so men have grown up to think that they have to be strong. They have to be the silent person. They have to, they're not allowed to cry. They're not allowed to have feelings. They're meant to be the, the strong. Now, there is enough evidence out there that mental health amongst men is really key and very, very important. You, you just mentioned to me that the US, the US branch is obviously talking about this. And, you know, in the US, there's more discussions about this, especially when we've had people who uh, chefs, and uh, you know, high profile people who've, you know, have, have, um, you know, been sick or, Break you know, or downs, yeah breakdowns, breakdowns, or, you know, or, or taking their own life, right? So it's very, very important that, you know, now is a time to be making this conversation normal. It's not a sign of weakness at all. It's about being healthy and being happy and to be balanced. And I, you know, the more we do that, the, 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 the fact that we're doing this webinar is fantastic for this industry, but also it's about, you know, having that message top down, which we're doing. And then, you know, uh, people saying that this is okay to talk about is there's no there's no shame in it at all it's you know these things that we're talking about as I said that these are high performance coping mechanisms and people are, you know mm -hmm. are, are, to achieve high performance they're using these techniques and don't we want to have people who are happy and healthy um, to come into the into the kitchens and come into the offices on a day-to-day -day basis because those people are going to be create teams that are going to be effective they're going to be efficient and highly highly productive I can guarantee that. Right. I mean, my vision would be that, you know, you could be working 12 hour days, you could have the full on stress, but you could have all of you, all, all, this, all the cooks, all the chefs, whoever, especially in the high pressure environments, remaining in Zen within themselves and doing the high pressure work. And they're gonna be, they, they could have a great day doing that and feel energized and feeling calm, relaxed and not, and avoid any stress related illnesses. So. You know, yeah. this is this this should, this has now out of any other time on the planet. This is the time to normalize this. It's now. the best time. Yeah. Yeah. My next question would be for for the leaders. You know, for the mm -hmm. managers mm -hmm. in any in any kind of you know um, corporation. It's always the leaders who you know bear a lot of the grunt, a lot of the pressure. Yeah. And um, and 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 in this industry, I I do know that we're not. I mean, admittedly, we're not equipped, you know, to handle if someone would come up to us and um, tell us, you know, they're feeling anxious, you know, this is what they're feeling, you know, they need time off, you know, it's, it's something that it's, you know, it's uh, um, dismissed. So how do we, how do we get leaders, you know, I mean, what's your advice for leaders in terms of, you know, handling stress themselves and how, how do you advise leaders to, you know, to, um, to address these issues whenever somebody would come up to them and tell them, you know, they have these kinds of feelings or issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for, for, for leaders, I mean, it's a given, I mean, it has to be a must that because they're in a very, they're working, they have a lot of more responsibility and pressure on them. Um, and they need to be leading by example. So they need to be making sure that they are able to cope with whatever they're coping with uh, and, and be remaining calm or relaxed at all times. Now, you know, gone are the days, you know, and, you know, you maybe if you're saying leaders, maybe chefs and stuff. You know, we see all these people like Gordon Ramsay and stuff shouting and screaming in the kitchen. So mm -hmm. maybe that's some level yeah. that you have to do that, and maybe that that's to some level still needs to happen. But it can affect you a lot, right? You need to be in peace and tranquility. You need to be leading a team. You need to lead by example, and to deal with that pressure on a day-to-day -day basis, so that you don't get sick yourself. So the, the, the five techniques or the four techniques I've mentioned here highlighted is very, very important. These are high performance techniques, right? So the leaders themselves should be taking care of themselves um, and making sure that they are uh, checking themselves in their terms emotionally, mentally, and physically so that they're healthy and best as possible so they can lead a team um, themselves. So they lead by example. Now, the other thing that one we should do is that in terms of people coming to, to them to talk to them, and I'm sure that lots of people who haven't done that, but it's really important to have an open door policy saying that, you know, listen, you know, my door is always open. I'm happy to help you and support you in any way I can. Please come and talk to me. We need to have that because we need to make sure that these individuals in the team are happy. So that, as I said, you're gonna have an efficient, effective and productive team then. 
So you need to have that very, um, have that open door policy. And then when these people do are able to come in, I do want to have a conversation to be an active listener, to be a compassionate and active listener, really listen to what they're saying. Because 50% of the time, it's just that the individual, individual needs to list, be heard. They just want to express themselves. They want to be heard. And just and a problem shared is a problem halved. Just by saying that can actually unburden that individual. So you That's probably true. saw the problem right so you mm -hmm. probably have unburdened that person um just by listening to them in an active compassionate manner not looking at your phone not listening taking phone calls just really looking at them spending that time with them 15 20 minutes 30 minutes how long it takes to really listen to them what their issue is what they're going through give them a talk or at least let hear them out if you can't find a solution give them some of those techniques if they don't know these tools and things that they're using that the leaders are using themselves to pass on to these people and if it's a it's, mm -hmm. if it's an issue that's greater than them that they can't manage then pass them on to some news professional but you know just doing right. that can make a huge difference a huge difference mm -hmm. yeah so let's um let's go into the questions we have a few questions from the viewers mm -hmm. so the question is um how to be how to keep productive at home and not get lazy uh -huh. uh, feeling and anxious is that how to get productive and not get lazy yeah, and feel not, yes. yeah so the thing is if this is it so pick one of those things so it could be you know firstly i'd say that you know i'm strong i'm resilient say start saying these powerful affirmations so you're rewiring the brain to say i am strong i'm resilient i'm strong i have amazing coping mechanism right so you start saying these things as i said the esr we can do this if you want to do that then mm -hmm. do breathing start doing the breathing technique or pick the dancing so pick a song that you like and and listen to it and then move your body. Do one of those things. That's going to start getting you to become a bit more productive. It's just little steps. You could do all of them. Yeah. I mean, you have enough time to do all of them uh, throughout the day. But if you feel that you you feel paralyzed, you can't do all of them. It's too overwhelming. Just pick one thing, and you know, listen to the song, or just say a few words to yourself. The more you keep saying that, the more you are rewiring the brain. You're actually feeling more empowered. You're able to to move your body, release some of the anxiety. Um, de depending on what which one of those is and then try those little things out each of these yeah. little things will really build up and you'll really and you'll be able to do a lot of things at home I would I would I would most probably make a list you know chefs they love to make lists right <laughs> yeah you can apply it in your you know in your work life like you know this morning from this time to this time you know you should exercise yes do something, exactly you know. exactly yeah, so, read read a book from page one to ten, for instance. Yes, I think yes. it helps that you have a checklist, and yes. by the end of the day, if you achieved eight out of ten, you feel a sense of accomplishment. Exactly. In some ways. I have a I have a client right now. Every day she's sending me, and she's on unpaid leave, and uh, every day she's sending me any or five things that she's done that day. So she's cooked herself a nice meal. She's done her breathing exercises. She did a, a fast, a, a water fast for 72 hours. She's showing um, her per, doing some personal development, reading a book. So you, you know, you have a morning routine. So as soon as you wake up, have a morning routine that you're basically doing some meditation. You're doing like 20 minutes mm -hmm. of exercise. Have that as a routine. So meditation, exercise, breathing technique would be really powerful. Create yourself a, a green smoothie and, and have that. And then you're, you know, those three things or four things are going to energize you. Then you are going to want to feel productive. Then you say, well, I'd like to learn a new skill. What kind of skill would I learn? Would I still learn something, a new cook cooking technique? Would I learn, like to learn mm -hmm. something completely different? But push, schedule that in so that the more you put that yeah. into a diary, then you can do that. And if you want to have a break and watch TV, then do that. But, you know, there's lots of things on YouTube now TEDx talks, YouTube channels, um, people are doing podcasts, that you can really feed your mind with so many things that you may not have had the opportunity to do while you're working on a day to day basis mm -hmm. in the long hours. But I would always implore everyone is, um, is to make sure that they're at least looking at doing some of these things that we've mentioned here, because that's going to keep them um, motivated, that's going right. to keep them strong on so many levels. These are life skills. And you will, you, you know, you can use these on a day to day and, okay. and build up. Okay, let's move to the next question. We have quite a few. So, um, so this this question is about talking about the new normal for restaurants. What's your best advice to do now to prepare for the new normal? Ah, uh, okay. So the new normal. Well, we don't know what the new normal is, right? Um, mm -hmm. I would think, you know, I mean, 
uh, part of me thinks of the new normal is, is the fact that people can't wait to get back out and want to get eat. I mean, one of the things mm-hmm. is in, in Dubai and in, in the UAE is that people love eating, love going out, out, going out and having going to restaurants. I think that's not going to change. Uh, maybe p- p- uh, people may not be going as frequently if they don't have enough money. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure that a lot more people are still going to go out. Okay, so what is a new normal? You're going to have less demand for people to come in into their restaurants. Is that what's going to happen? What What is the definition of new normal? We don't know. Okay, but mm-hmm. as I said to you, from a point of view of um, a coach and therapist, you know, it's about making sure that you're resilient to deal with what's coming up. I personally think mm-hmm. that people are going to go back out and wanted to eat. Maybe not everyone, but there are going to be people out there, you know, who want to go out to restaurants again who are itching to go out and we're going to have Ramadan, but there's going to be evenings. You know, if we're, once the lockdown is finished, there are going to be evenings, I'm sure. And even after Ramadan, there are going to be people going back out to the restaurant. So I don't think that's going to really change. Maybe people may not be going to all the top expensive restaurants, but, and people may downsize or downgrade to what they're going or the the frequency. Um, But I think people will still be going. So yeah, it's a still it's still a big question mark. But I think the one thing that's certain is to really um, reset yourself positively. So whatever yes. the new goal would be, you're prepared, right? Yeah. And listen, and Chef Joe, look, this is maybe sound woohoo, but this is science based now. Dr. Bruce Lipton, mm-hmm. he's a doctor, medical doctor. He's done a lot of uh, on the biology of belief, and I've put a, a link there for on, on that. But they've done some research as well that basically your brain activity basically it, it emits from the outside so you can actually create vibration whatever you think and you can create if you're constantly thinking negatively you're going to create that environment right so it's mm-hmm. really important to start thinking positively a it's going to be good for yourself it's going to be good for your well-being but think positive trust the universe trust you know um your you know whoever you believe in and but see and visualize a positive, um, you know, results that everything's going to work out. Everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to work out. I've actually given a recording, created a recording that I think we can send out to people is how to overcome right, COVID-19 right. anxiety and creating that positive thinking mm. and that visualization. The more we think creatively, the more we think positively, the more we're going to feel better, the more we can, then, you know, create that environment as well. So if it's a choice between mm. thinking negatively and thinking positively or thinking what if, Let's stop the what if. We're not in control of that. Right. But let's, let's be empowered and say, everything is going to be okay. Everything's going to be fantastic. We're going to move into an amazing life. We're moving forward. That's not um, being unrealistic. It's thinking, okay, we are in this situation, but everything will turn out, unfold, and we will deal with whatever comes up, and everything will work out. That's okay, mm-hmm. and, and so, I have to say that. So we have a last question. Mm-hmm. So it's more about, you know, the discipline that you have at home because we're all stuck with our mobiles you know the tendency is re- is to really pick up your phone and um, watch netflix and even your kids are doing the same thing it's not necessarily good for our eyesight so how do we i guess the question here is how do we force ourselves to detach from technology when it's the only thing that we have right now that's connecting connecting us to the rest of the world. So how do we force so ourselves? Do we have to? So the thing is, this is really interesting. So you, if you're in a house full of four or five people and each one of you are on your phones, okay, are you actually connecting with each other, right? Mm-hmm. This is a perfect time that you disconnect from the rest of the world because the rest of the world is going through their journey, right? So why do we have to, know? as I said, you only need to know what's happening in the world for five minutes or 10 minutes in each day. No, you don't need to be. I remember a time, if my, I'm old enough to know life before, mobile phones right Right. we only had mobile Mm -hmm. phones for 15 years but we had a life before then and this is the opportunity because if you've been working long hours maybe you haven't had the opportunity to spend time with your family and and connect with them this is the opportunity to actually disconnect from your phones and spend more quality time with your family do board games have conversations talk about different things that you maybe topics that you you know you, you know you never did I used to, when I was a kid, my mom used to have this book on encyclopedia and we read about you know, new things, you know, about my mom, me, and my brother used to, to um, talk about these things, uh, about different places in the world or, and educate ourselves and connect with, you know, our children or our partner on a different level that we have been so uh, consumed by phones that we need to do, you know, we're addicted to them. You know, before you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think to put it in a chef's point of view, you know, we always complain that we never have time to read our cookbooks or learn a new recipe or cook a, res- a new recipe. So I think it's yeah. really the time to learn there and do something 
exactly yeah. so i said you know learning a new a chef technique that you know you know i don't know how to fillet a fish or i don't know all the techniques you know i'm bad at cooking right. but the thing is that you know there'll be a technique that you've always wanted to learn and, and you can go to youtube and learn that technique right you've got master class there's you know and there's the top chefs uh Rob gordon ramsay mm -hmm. is doing something about you know these these techniques on how to make a souffle and some that maybe those for the everyday person but there could be something that you've always wanted to do but you haven't managed to do and now you can actually cook yeah. it at home right it's really the perfect time so speaking of time our time is up we've um we've been talking and uh, talking to people for, for about an hour wow. um so i'm we're supposed to do we're supposed to do a, a sample of how to do meditation but samira has we don't have time for that right now that's okay that's okay um, but samira has shared with us a recording so we will share it to you via email or via the chat box so can you talk uh, a little bit about the recording that you've done that you're going to share yes. with so yeah i mean obviously i've shared the links here as well um and the recording is really how to overcome um um how to overcome anxiety uh, covid 19 anxiety and it really is a very deep state relaxation a 20 minute recording is a creative visualization to get you into a very deep state of relaxation and really feel empowered and become more resilient and whatever you're having to confront at the moment and, and, and feel a bit more empowered. So it's a very relaxing recording. And a lot of people I've spoken to recently, um, friends and, and clients have told me they're finding it difficult to sleep. So it will help you to relax and to really get, have a good night's sleep as well. So, and learning uh -huh. that level of peace, that creativity, with that creative visualization, it will show you how to have that deep level of peace as well. And so that you can really tap into that level of peace and so that you know that you can replicate that on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're feeling anxious, you can gauge yourself that if you're feeling anxious, you're not feeling that peace. Listen to that recording, yeah. do some of these techniques and you'll get back into your state of center, being centered as well. And in the chat box, um, we have also shared some of um, Samira's favorite links to meditation sites, right? And apps that you can use. <laughs> Especially yes. for us chefs, you know, it's um, it's something that's new to us. It's not, you know, we don't do this um, on a daily basis, but now we have the time to do so. So we have um, shared some links um, in yeah. order just for, you know, a simple guidance for us on how to do meditating, breathing properly. The, exactly. Kind of like There's simple a, things that we can do. Exactly. I've got, I've included, um, I showed you the simple breathing technique, but I've also included uh, a powerful breathing technique, how to meditate. The, the healing power of gratitude and also um, other videos of people being interviewed and how they overcame adversity and the power of belief. Yeah. And, and then also then yeah, there'll be the really recording important. that you listen. So these things really could, you know, you can watch these things and then it could lead to other things that you'd want to watch as well. So just these okay. things itself. Okay, so um, Samir, any concluding words before um, we end this session? So look, I mean, look, I thank you for the opportunity. Um, it's an it's honor for us to have you. <laughs> it's actually my first time to talk to a real, you know, a certified therapist. <laughs> so it's my pleasure. It's, it's my pleasure. So it's my pleasure. But look, all I want to say is that no matter where you are right now, and there has been a lot of fear and anxiety at the moment, people are really stressed out, um, you know, it's really a time to empower ourselves and you know we are going through what we're going through but the thing is it's really important that we take care of ourselves you individuals whoever is listening to this or whoever will listen to this you matter you as human beings and people individuals you matter you are really important and so please take time to before more important than any money or anything else in this world so take the time to, to listen to the, some of these uh, videos and, and practice some of these techniques. It will get you into a relaxed state. It'll get you into a deep peace, peace of, uh, uh, of an inner peace so that you can move forward and really start moving forward and taking um, action in whatever you're having to overcome, all right? So please, that's all I'd like to say. And so that you can remain strong and resilient emotionally, mentally, and physically, but you can do this and you have the power. So I want to say thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Samir. My Thank pleasure. you, everybody, for tuning in. There, uh, we'll be sharing the recording on our Facebook pages, so you can watch it again. And and please share it. You know, it's um, uh, it's good to share these kinds of information. It's more good news rather than the bad news. Exactly. And please, please, one more thing I'd say is please work with each other, help each other, support each other with love and kindness. What we need right now is more love and kindness and support for each other. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.